Hi folks, my name is Simon Bennett. I'm the Zettatac proxy lead, and as I just mentioned, I work for Mozilla. Uh, now I'm going to start off with some questions for you, because it's always interesting preparing for these talks. You never know who's actually going to turn up. So if you are uh, one of the builders, if you're a developer, could you put your hand up? Okay, that's quite a good, good selection. Um, uh, one of the, if you're a breaker, a pen tester? Maybe twice as many, but uh, not surprising. Um, and if you're a defender, or the ops guys? A few, great. Management consultants, sort of though, you know, on that side? A few of those, yep, yeah, great. Um, and the other thing is, who here has not, had not heard of Zap before this um, conference? A few of you. And how many people have actually used Zap? That's good. That's um, yeah, growing. Every time I ask these questions, that number's growing. Uh, so, uh, for this talk, uh, I don't want to. Actually, I will go through a bit of an introduction to Zap, but I don't want to um, talk too much about it. So I'm going to skip through it quite quickly. Uh, there, there's a lot more information on the web, and obviously you can download it and play around with it. Uh, but I do think there's a perception um, that Zap is for people new to application security. And that's good, actually, because that's what I've been trying to sell it. Um, you know, I want it to be the ideal for people new to application security. However, most people who use it probably are professional pen testers. And the other thing is, I think people probably have the perception that uh, we're playing catch up, particularly um, compared with commercial tools. And that's also true. Um, but I think we've got to the stage, not quite feature parity, but you know, we've, we've done a lot of catching up. And um, we're actually now developing things which are new and doing things that no other tool does. Uh, and so that's why I'm going to talk about Zap Innovations today. So, quick run through. What is Zap? It's an application, it's a tool for doing penetration tests on web applications, and it's easy to use. It is completely free and open source, like all OWASP projects, so there's no pro version, there's not going to be a pro version. Um, it is an OWASP flagship project, so OWASP had a limited number of projects which have, have seen to be the highest quality and the ones we think um, people should really should really use. Uh, it is ideal for beginners, as I mentioned, um, but it's also being used a lot by professionals. Um, but uh, one, my uh, my background is actually development, and I wanted to make sure that it was actually that it's actually um, ideal for including uh, for developers to use in automated um, security testing. So as part of continuous integration, I'm not going to cover that today. Um, there's a lot of information on the on the uh, website. We need to do more, uh, but uh, and it's also becoming a framework for advanced testing. And I'm going to talk about some of those things later. But. Like all tools, it is not a sim, uh, silver bullet. You know, you're not going to be able to press this button and it will solve all your problems. You know, there are certain things that automated scanners can f um, are very effective at finding. We want to make Zap better at doing that. We also want to make sure that you can actually, the professional pen testers can go in and do a lot more manual testing and do a real help for them. Uh, so we, have, we do have principles. Uh, I've mentioned free and open source. Involvement is very actively encouraged. It is a community project. I want people to get involved. A significant amount of my, my time, uh, time and effort is in helping other people to get involved. So one reason I come to these sort of conferences, if you want to get involved, please grab me afterwards or contact me later. Uh, there's always things to do. It is cross-platform. Uh, I, I find it strange people do, writing a tool just to work on one platform. So as long as you've got a JRE, a recent JRE, it will run. Um, Gone for, we, easy to use is very important because I want it to be suitable for people's new, new to application security. Um, and it's also easy to install. I've played with lots of security tools. Some of them can be a complete nightmare. Uh, I've got to you know, use Linux for a long time, but some of the packaging, ye gods. Um, it is internationalized. Uh, I think that's important. Uh, maybe I'm unusual. I certainly seem to be unusual. A lot of very few security tools seem to be internationalized, but the world speaks English, doesn't it? Um, and it is fully documented. Um, whether all the documentation is that great is another matter. I mean, it's been written by the developers, including myself. Uh, you know, we're not professionals at this kind of stuff. You know, um, but we want to make sure there is documentation there. Hopefully, we won't need to do, use it, but it's there. And we've got lots of user groups, and uh, user group and developer groups for help and support. We also want to work well with other tools. Um, Zap will never be the be-all and end-all. Uh, we want to make sure that we can consume things from other tools, and other tools can consume things from Zap. So it works. We want to play well with as many tools as possible, and we want to 
you reuse well-regarded components. Um, so whenever we look at a new feature, we always look to see if there's something out there we can adopt and reuse rather than reinventing the wheel. But where we do reinvent the wheel, what we're trying to do is make sure those are components that other tools can reuse, even our competitors. A uh, few statistics for you. Um, so I released it uh, three years ago. Um, it's a fork of Paros, uh, Paros Proxy, which I'm sure some of you remember fondly. Um, the last release, um, 2.1.0, was released in April of this year, and I really wanted to get 2.2.0 out before this conference. I failed. It's close, but it's not quite. Uh, there's a few little things I want to change, um, so sorry, it's not quite there, but it's very close. Um, was that one there. So yeah, 2.1.0 has been downloaded more than 20,000 times, but also it's included in a lot of things like um, distributions like Kali and things, so a lot, there's a lot more downloads than just those. And I said 2.2.0 is coming very soon. Uh, we have a power, I don't know if you've heard, seen this site, Olo, I think, I don't know how you pronounce it, but there's a site that tracks open source projects, um, so I, I get pulled some statistics from there because it's kind of useful. According to that, we have 16 active contributors. Um, you know, many more people have contributed, but 16 active ones. And apparently, it took 120 person years to develop. I haven't spent 120 person years on it, I assure you. Um, but it has been translated into 19 languages, and that's something I'm really proud of. Um, we try and make it as easy, easy as possible, so we support a really wide range of languages. And if anyone would like to help with that, or translate it into new languages, then please get in touch. It's very easy to do. Uh, but as I said, I think it is, you know, the impression I get is that it is mostly used by professional pen testers. Um, but that's difficult to know because it's actually difficult to get feedback. A lot of people just use it and don't give us any information about it, you know, what they're doing. And just so you, yes, I've seen some people kind of say, oh, it's just a fork of Paros. Um, it's a little while ago I, I ran these stats, so it's probably changed since uh, you know, the, the proportions changed even more. But the last time I looked, um, it was only 30% Paros code and 70% is new code we've written. And we've not been trying to replace um, the Paros code, it's just where we improve it or change it, um, then if there's, we don't use Paris code anymore, we'll delete it. Uh, and I mentioned that um, we find it very difficult to get feedback from people. There is actually a Zap user questionnaire which is linked off the, both the OWASP Zap page and the Google code page, and it's been translated into French and Spanish as well. Uh, so please, if you use Zap, go to that user questionnaire and give us some feedback. We want to know what you like, what you don't like, what you'd like it to do. Uh, and just a couple of stats from there, so um, everybody who answered um, thought it was either fairly suitable, very suitable for people new to application security, and only one person thought it wasn't suitable for, for security professionals. Uh, don't know why that is, but, you know, so, so the, the people who are using Zap are actually very happy and think it's very suitable for a wide range of people. Uh, so main features. Well, it's a security tool, it's got a proxy, we've got active passive scanners, we've got spiders. Um, I'm going to talk about some of these things a bit more uh, later, but one thing I want to stress is the online add-on marketplace. So Zap has a check, an option to check for updates. Um, you, it's up to you whether you turn it on, um, but it's, you know, you'll actually get told when there are updates. But we have um, this marketplace, so you can download add-ons. You can go to the marketplace, there's a button on Zap, I'll take it to the marketplace and you can download new add-ons and you get alerted when they get updated as well. So not many, I, I don't think that many people are using that, but there's a whole range of great add-ons which allow you to extend um, Zap in lots of different ways. Um, and there's loads of other additional features which I'm not going to go through, but um, there they are. Uh, there are. So there are different, I think there are different ways of using Zap. Um, we have this kind of quick start option, which is just a give it a URL and go, bang. Uh, that is, it is pretty effective for certain types of websites, um, but you know, if you've got authentication there, it's, it's not going to work. But it's you know, a, a very quick point and shoot uh, option. Um, the more to, then you've, you've got another option with going a bit further away, actually you proxy your browser through Zap, explore it manually, which is going to be you know, a bit more effective, and maybe use the spiders and things, and then do the scanning. Uh, that will be more effective. Um, and then, of course, you've got the, the full manual pen testing where you do the proxying, but then you start exploring the application using some of the uh, more advanced Zap features. Um, so that's the traditional pen testing approach. But as I mentioned before, we've also got, um, I think it's really important, the automated security tests. I really want Zap to play very well in this space. 
Um, so we've got an API, um, a lot of people are integrating. We're, at Mozilla, we're integrating it with our QA um, process as well. So we want to make it zap work in this space as well as possible. So right, that's the introduction. Uh, if you want to know any more about Zap, then um, getting started, then please go to the website or ping me or whatever. Um, so what I want to do now is talk about the Zap innovations. And the thing is, Zap has actually been changing a lot. So if you looked at it a couple of years ago, it's changed massively. Um, and there are various reasons for that. We have a lot of people contributing to it. Uh, Mozilla have now given me a job where I spend a lot of my time working on Zap, which is really great. Um, but the other thing is Google Summer of Code, uh, which has been really great. So last year, uh, we took part, the first time we took part in Google Summer of Code. Uh, so we had three projects. So Cosmin uh, rewrote the spider and ad added session awareness, which is really, these are things, I mean, not really innovations, but it's really um, things which are necessary and building blocks onto which we can add things. Um, Griefer wrote the Ajax spider using Crawljax. One of the other um, presenters talked about putting that in Burp uh, yesterday. So this is, you know, we've got an Ajax spider, um, which is something that you know not that many other security tools have, all using open source and reuse as well. And finally, um, Robert worked on um, WebSocket support. And I am still convinced that Zap has the best um, support for web sockets uh, of any security tool out there, whether it's um, open source or commercial. Um, let me know if you think it's, if that's it, not the case, uh, but I'm, nobody has been able to give me an example of a better tool for testing web sockets. You can, do, you can intercept them, you can, um, you can change them, you can fuzz the requests, really very powerful. And all of that stuff is in the current release, so you can use that right now. Uh, however, what we've also got is, uh, obviously, this year uh, is new Google Summer of Code, and we have um, five students working on new projects. And I'll go through each of them in a little bit more detail. So Cosmin has come back, uh, and he is now actually building on the work he did before, which is a, um, advanced session handling, um, uh, which and is actually a lot more than that, to be honest. Um, so his um, mentor is Guifer, who was also a um, student last year, Google Summer of Code, um, student. So the idea is this actually provides a fully integrated handling for sessions and authentications. And what we actually want to do is allow you to test access control in a semi-automated way. And we're pretty sure we can do that. And it will never be completely automated, but there's a lot we can do. Um, so, you know, Zap will understand um, authentication, sessions, users, so it'll be able to log in as different users, it'll understand roles, be able to log in in different users, um, completely automated, and compare what's going on. And then you say, well, you've got this user and this user, and these are the differences. And then start automating those tests so you can see what actually happens when one user um, lo um, tries to access functionality that should only be available to another user. Uh, I actually wrote a, a web application at a previous job which had um, I think it was half a dozen vertical roles, um, and they, most of those were also horizontal as well. Um, and that, that any user could have any combination of those roles. Uh, I designed it, I wrote the access control, I did the pen testing on the access control before we got the pros in to test it. Uh, that was a nightmare to test. And it was at that point I kind of realized that there was a lot I could have done automated th through Zap if we had better session handling, and that's kind of what Cosmin's been working to, towards from last year's project and this year's one as well. So this will be really powerful. Uh, and right now, he, so he's actually standardizing the session authentication handling in Zap. Um, he's doing it in a branch, but we're gonna merge it into the trunk very shortly. Um, so there's a screenshot just to prove it's being done. Um, and another one. So uh, we've also got SAML 2.0, so Velasti is working on that, and we've got um, Prasad and Kevin are mentoring him. And so this is the idea is to detect, decode, and fuzz SAML messages and, and simulate a whole set of attacks against them. So we're getting another thing which a lot of very few security tools handle. Um, so this is, and you can already replay and attack um, SAML requests. That's all really powerful stuff. And this is being built as an add on, so you'll just be able to download it um, onto the next Zap release. And there we've got a, a SAML request editor there. Uh, and then we've got advanced reporting. I mean, a lot of the feedback we've 
got is that the Zap reporting is not very good, and we know that it's pretty awful, to be honest. Uh, so what Ralph is doing is actually um, integrating um, it with BERT, uh, which is an Apache project. So we actually have highly, really flexible, um, powerful reporting. Um, he's already got um, a prototype generating PDFs uh, with charts, so we can generate these sort of reports. So this is a much needed enhancement so that Zap can actually generate reports that professional pen testers are actually happy to give to their customers and can customize with their own logos and things like that and decide what content goes in and how it's presented. Uh, and we've got a content management system scanner, uh, which Abdeladi is working on uh, with Islam mentoring him. So the idea is this, we're actually going to fingerprint um, CMS systems, work out the versions, and work out um, the, the, the known vulnerabilities that are found. Um, he's got an alpha fingerprinting extension already available now. Uh, so again, really useful. Uh, screenshot there. And then finally, um, Alessandro is working on dynamic actions. And the idea is it's actually going to be a very powerful but simple way to extend Zap. And I don't know how many of you know, but Zap actually still supports the old Paros filters, which are quite restrictive. So they actually change things in line. Uh, but they're a bit restrictive and uh, not that usable. Um, so the idea is to replace all of that and actually could go a lot further than they've ever been able to do. Uh, and I'm going to cover the, a bit of the status on that a bit later. Right, so that was a very run through of the Google Summer of Code projects. Um, and now is the scary demo time. Um, so we'll see if this all works. So this is Zap. You probably can't read much of the text on the screen. Uh, but it looks very similar to what, um, what you've seen before, those who have used it. Uh, ignore the, the black um, icon. It's just because I'm running a dev build. So it just, just helps us tell. Um, but what we've, what we've found, and um, this was, we've had discussions in the middle of the security team, so we realized that um, security tools and browsers don't actually play that well together. You know, they are, they can be a real pain. So you have to configure your browser to point at your security tool. You probably have to change your browser, or your security tool to um, talk to the, the corporate proxy. You then have to import the certificate. It's a lot of messing around. It's not, you know, you get used to it, but it's a pain. And particularly for people new to application security, it's quite a barrier. So we have um, this little button here called um, plug and hack. And some of you may have seen the um, post on the Mozilla um, security blog. Uh, about this. So basically, you click that and you get your browser comes up. Now, in this particular case, um, obviously I'm using Firefox, uh, but I use, I don't know how many people use Firefox profiles. Uh, they are yeah, really useful. So you can have different profiles and they're basically completely separate configuration. So I'm going to create a new profile. So we now have um, a new, brand new profile, which is completely, it has no configuration at all. It's just out of the box. Um, all we've done is we've passed a URL across to it. Now, and this is a URL pointing to Zap. Um, and it's got a click to set up button. And what this does, it um, has a look to see whether there's a certain add-on installed. And there isn't. So we've got an option to add it. And then we're going straight into the standard Firefox uh, options. So this is all very standard stuff. And now we've got an option to click to set this up. And now we've got what we call the scary warning. Because uh, what we're doing is we are putting a man in the middle proxy in between our browser and everything we're looking at. You do not want to do this by accident. <laughs> uh, so this is, yeah, I do understand what I'm doing. And that's it. And that is now configured. So if I now go to. And you can actually see, those people who see on the screen, we're actually getting requests here. So what that is, we've got a button. You, you pre click OK a couple of times. And Firefox is now proxying via Zap. Nice and simple. Um, the one thing you won't have noticed or won't appreciate is obviously we've got the, the um, forward proxy gets configured for you. And also, if I actually had access to an HTTPS, I'm not on the, online at the moment, but um, we've also imported the um, SSL certificate as well from the root one from Zap, which is freshly generated. So you get your own um, root CA cert, which gets imported and trusted in Firefox. Um, now, this is all, that, 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 that's nice, um, kind of neat. Um, but one thing, I mean, we wanted to make sure it's easy to configure within Firefox. I don't know how many of you um, know about the Firefox developer toolbar, um, otherwise known as Gickly. A few of you do. 
Cool. So Shift F2 brings it up. And then if you just type help, you get a list of all the available commands. Now, the, um, add, the Firefox add-on is a company called Ringleader. So I can type that, and we get all of the, the list of things that it supports. You might be able to read it, but these are the commands. So it's kind of a, a command line, but it gets, it's menu-driven. So it allows you to switch configurations, allows you to clear configurations out. Um, so I'm not going to clear the configuration out, because that's not what I want to do. But when you do that, um, it then resets all your proxies information back and removes the Zap CA cert. So you, it's all nice and clean. So that's, that's really nice. Um, but then we got a little bit carried away. Because we suddenly thought, well, this is quite powerful. Um, particularly if you do something like, well, if I type zap, you get a load of options. So what, what zap is doing, zap is actually telling Firefox about things you can invoke from within Firefox. This suddenly gets very powerful. Um, so I. Because we start to think about how we use tools like Zap. Actually, I'm going to sit down a bit, be, be a bit easier. So we thought, you know, if you want to uh, intercept something, so you want to go here, and I want to add 100 uh, items to the basket, and I can't go above 12, so I will switch to Zap. I will uh, put the intercept on, add to basket, switch back again, change things. Um, so quantity. 100, and that's fine. It all works, um, but it's a little, it's a bit of messing around. Wouldn't it be really, you know, wouldn't it be really nice if you can go, okay, I'm gonna navigate to where I want to go, and then I'm gonna go zap, and I want to break on all requests from the within the browser. Go true. And it's incepted. So I didn't have to switch to and from the tool. I can then go in here, make whatever changes I want, and go back. So it, avoid, it means you don't have to do quite as much switching around, which is kind of neat. Um, but then there are some really powerful things you can do. So what we can do is we can say zap. And actually, I want a new HTTP session on this host. And I'm going to call it Fred. Now, you won't notice any difference because I wasn't actually logged in. But I can now log in, and I have to register. So we'll have Fred at whatever, and so we've registered as Fred. So we're logged in as Fred, which is all very nice. Uh, and now within your browser, without doing anything, we're going to go zap, and we're going to start another HTTP session. Um, and I'm going to call this Jim. And all of a sudden, I'm not logged in anymore. Because Zap understands HTTP sessions and allow me, allows me to manage them. So I'm now going to go in and I'm going to register Jim. So I'm now logged in as Jim. And now I'm going to go down here without switching tool again. And I'm going to say zap. And I'm going to switch sessions. Add on that one. And I want to switch to Fred. And I'm now logged in as Fred. So I can switch between HTTP sessions within without even leaving um, Firefox. So I can just go in and browse as one user, switch to another, browse as them, switch back, do operations, and switch between them. I think this is incredibly powerful. We come up with a few different use cases, but you know, this is going to be something that we're just going to carry on developing and make really, really powerful. But the one thing I want to stress is that we didn't want, you know, we could say, that, OK, this is something for Zap and Firefox. It's cool. We didn't want to do that because we think it's really cool, and it'd be even cooler if we could actually make it a, if every if all browsers and security tools supported it. So this is is an initiative called Plug and Hack. The whole idea is to make allow browsers and security tools to integrate more easily. 
and it allows the security tools to expose their functionality to browsers. Um, and it's a kind of, we're proposing it as a kind of de facto standard. So it has been developed by the Mozilla security team, but we want it to be browser and security tool independent. Um, so we've actually, you know, we want other browsers and security tools to support this. Those menus about what Zap, um, the, the functionality you can invoke, that comes across as a manifest. So other tools can have completely different functionality. It has, there's nothing which is tied to um, Firefox or Zap in this, in this initiative. Um, and we don't want to stop there because we're having a lot of fun. Uh, so we've got to plan the next phase. And the next phase is to allow browsers to expose functionality to security tools in a standard way. Now, I don't know if any of you can think of some fun things you could do. Think of, you know, because there are certain things that it's actually much easier to test in the browser. You know, your DOM XSS's things. Maybe, well, maybe sort of SQL injection on the um, local browser um, database. Those sort of things. So you will be able to actually control the browser from your security tool in a standardized way. Uh, we think this will be really, really powerful. And the other thing is, at the moment, we've got this command line thing. We'd actually like the tools to be able to define a UI so you could actually have a, a set of buttons or pull downs and things, again, in a completely generic way. Uh, we think this is going to be really very, very powerful. Now, obviously, um, we have Firefox and Zap are going to support this. Um, Minion, the tool um, Ivan talked about before, um, will also support this. But we have started talking to a few other people we know. Uh, and I am delighted to be able to say that both Burp Suite and Kali will be supporting Plug and Hack. Uh, and we hope to announce more tools so soon. Do you like that? <laughs> right, so um, and the, other, the major change in Zap is um, scripting. So we've always had this, or for, for quite a while, we've had this scripting console. Uh, this is really great. So you've been able to write scripts in pretty much any scripting language supported uh, by Java, and there's hundreds of those. And you can just run scripts, and they have access to all of the Zap internals, because we're open source. You know, we, we can make all of this data available, something commercial tools can't really do. Uh, and this is great, but it, you've only been able to run scripts, sort of, you know, standalone scripts straight away. And we've always, there's always been a plan to do more than that. And um, what you've got now is a tab on the left-hand side. And this gives you different script types. Um, you won't be able to read them very probably. Um, we've got passive, active, standalone, and targeted. So the idea is we're actually allowing you to embed these scripts within Zap and the way within and with how Zap runs. So you'll be able to write passive scan rules. You'll be able to write active scan rules. You'll be able to write, obviously still the st um, standalone ones, um, but also targeted ones. Um, and so targeted ones are ones where standalone ones every self-contained. Um, but targeted ones, you pass in a URL. And it's actually got a, a, an email from Jim Manico saying, um, last week saying, does SAP support um, extracting H um, HTML comments? I was like, oh, well, you can search for them things, but um, not really. We don't have a separate thing. And I just thought, well, actually, that would be quite neat. Um, so I was in the airport, um, and I wrote this little um, JavaScript uh, script for finding comments. It's very simple, but there it is. Um, and one thing we have is we actually have templating with this. So you don't, you're not, um, and actually I'll show you that in a minute, but with the find comments thing, what we can do is we can go to the sites tab, we can select a node, right click, and invoke with a script. Find comments, and it goes through and finds all the comments. Very simple, but it means you can actually integrate all your scripts into the Zap UI and invoke them however you want. And we want to say create uh, an active scanning rule. Go here. We want a call it something like that. So we're going to use JavaScript. We want an active scanning rule, and it generates a template for you. A very simple template which has got documentation, so you can see exactly what you need to do and tells you what to do. So you know you've you've you found something. You know there's something particular about that site. Uh, I mean you want to just very you know. Zap is open source. You can go in and change the source code. But in the middle of a pen test, um, you haven't got time to download in cli a cli clip, set it up, work out the Zap internals. You know, what you can do is just fire this up, create a very quick script, and you get all the output here. 
So, you know, as these things run, you see what happens, and if, if there's an error in the script, it just disables it, um, and then you can make changes and run it again. So, really, really powerful. So, we're going to, and we're going to basically, this is actually a pluggable architecture. So, the fact that it actually says, you know, we've got these sets of things, that's not the limit. So, with the scripting console, we're going to have different types. So, we're going to have the standalone scripts, which are kind of like now. We're going to have um, targeted ones where you specify the URL, typically by the right clicking on things, um, active and passive ones, proxy ones. So you can run, um, put basically whatever code you want to run in line on every request or you know, change it however you look. And also library ones, so you actually um, imp import libraries and reuse them other scripts. So they, this is really powerful um, and it's really great. But when it comes down to it, scripting is still a bit complicated. And I've, I've got this strange belief that there is still something between um, the really complex, uh, you know, the, the, the scripting and, and writing languages, uh, you know, using Java and things, and actually a kind of um, the, the point and click of the UI. Um, so we discussed this in the security team, and we came up with this uh, really silly idea, which was to create a new scripting language. Well, why not? Uh, I've never created a scripting language before. How do you learn? You create a scripting language. Um, now, this may seem a bit strange, um, may seem very silly, but what we wanted to do is make sure it, um, uh, that, <laughs> quickly lose my thread. Uh, we want to make, make sure that it, it was, it, we're not trying to um, c compete against the Pythons and the Rubies and things like that. That's not what it's about. We want something simple and effective. So what I'm going to do is um, give you an example of um, a use case. So one of the use cases is imagine you know, you're doing a pen test and you want you found a vulnerability. Uh, how do you tell a developer? You give them a PDF uh, and it explains things in security language which they don't understand probably, telling them about a problem they've never heard of before. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch back to uh, budget store and go to the contact us page. Now, there are various ways to create these scripts, but what I'm going to do is, because I've shown you um, plug and hack before, one of the things you might not have noticed is there's a record option here. So I'm going to record, start recording. Okay. Now, because I'll get this wrong, hopefully this is the attack. <laughs> no, it's not typical. Ah, this is so typical. <laughs> That's not, I've forgotten what the attack is, I've gone black. Right, so I'm just going to carry on as if, as if that, that actually worked. That should have been a pop-up, sorry. Um, now what, what, what's happened is Zap has actually created a script for you. So if we go here, we will see the script. And the language is called, called Zest, and it looks horrible. It really does look horrible um, because it's in JSON. Who wants to program in JSON? Nobody. Uh, but if you look on, the on this side here, you will actually see that it's actually designed to be uh, rep um, edited graphically. So it's got a graphical representation. So what we have is we have um, requests. So we have posts and gets and all these kind of things, which is not too surprising. Um, but we've also got other things. So what we can do is we can run these scripts. And it's failing. The results down here, we're getting red flags, which is kind of unusual. I mean, what does failing actually mean in this context? A bit strange. Um, so what you can do is you can right-click, and because I mean, it actually says here it's failed an assertion. Because what we've done is we have actually Zest supports assertions, and these are sanity checks. Now, the Zest language doesn't say that you, know, you have to have them and they come by default, but Zap is putting them in to try and be helpful. Uh, and so, because when you make a request, how do you know it's actually done what is expected? Um, so that's what assertions are there for. We put a couple of default ones in, um, one which is um, checking the status code, and one which is checking the length, you know, approximately. And at the moment, this one, one of this one the length checking is failing. So if I right click, um, we can compare with the original response, and we can actually see, okay, yeah, 
there's some kind of minor changes, but nothing unreasonable. Um, but there's enough of a change to make more than 1% different. Um, so we can go in here and we can change that. It's plus or minus 2%, save, and when we run that, now that one down there passes. So that's nice. Um, the other thing is, we've got these um, things called assigns, uh, which is a little bit strange. So I will go in and just, that one, I'll delete. But I'll go in here, and here we've got, I'll just change this one. So I'm going to run this, and you can see here that the post has passed, which is interesting, because if you actually look at the request, it's got an anti-CSRF token in there. And so we've also got this assign statement. And what that is doing is that is actually extracting the anti-CSRF token. And again, the, 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 this has been put in by Zap, because Zest doesn't understand about cross-site scripting and doesn't understand about CSRF tokens, things like that, but Zap does. Zap has spotted that we've made a post um, that uses an anti-CSRF token. We've, we've, it's spotted that one's actually gone into the response. And so it thought, well, we'll assign it to a variable, Zest variable, because that might be kind of useful. And then when you actually look at the post request, you'll see that we've then, it, Zap has detected that it's been used and puts the token in for you. So you can actually, so uh, you don't have to use these features, you can turn them off. You can very quickly build up a, a request that, um, so you know, you can imagine you've got a complex form, where, a, a wizard, where you go through five steps and you've got different anti-CSRF tokens on each one and then you can actually, you can only attack the parameter in the last field. Um, well, that's, Zap will handle all of this for you with Zest, and you'll just be able to go straight to that token. Um, there's actually a load, I mean, we're trying to keep um, Zest as simple as possible, but one thing, I mean, this is, um, I said before about Alessandro's um, project. Alessandro is working with me on Zest, and one of the things he's put in is you can right click and you can surround with a loop. So imagine the case where we've got our, our, um, wizard, you've got five, um, five requests all with anti-CSRF tokens, and you actually want to fuzz something in the last um, form. You can then surround this with a loop. Um, it's integrated with all of the um, um, fuzzing files to actually go through, and it will make all of these requests each time fuzzing that um, parameter. All that. So really, really powerful. Now, what, I mean, I know that some other tools have kind of macroing language, but when it comes down to it, I think this is much more powerful, uh, but still very easy point of click. You know, there's no, you're not going to get any syntax errors because the UI won't actually allow you to put anything that's invalid. It, your script might not work, but it'll still um, do, it won't actually fail the syntax error. You don't have to remember what the syntax is because it's graphical. And um, we've got actions, assertions, conditions. You can have any, any length, any depth of condition you like. So this is it's called Zest. It's, it is an experimental scripting language. Um, I'm never, you know, we, the people working on it, we've never created one of these things before. We may make mistakes. Um, but it is, you know, it's developed by the Mozilla security team. It is, of course, free and open source. Um, I've mentioned it's JSON, but it is tool independent. Uh, it's released under the Mozilla uh, 2.0 license. So again, we actually want other tools to adopt this. Because wouldn't it be great if you could actually as a security professional, you find a new type of vulnerability, you could actually define how that gets um, found in a Zest script, and then that could be imported to all the other security tools. So, um, and Zest, the way I've implemented it, actually, it's a standard Java scripting language, so and it will just be, you can plug it into the active scanner, the passive scanner. We are going to use this very heavily, and it will um, replace filters, so that's what Alessandro is working on. So we'll get rid of all the filters and just have Zest scripts, which will be much more flexible, much more powerful, but still simple to use. Um, so, so Zest statements, we've got very simple HTTPS requests, assertions, the kind of sanity checks, conditionals, um, assignment so you can pull content out of requests very easily, actions. So we actually allow you to um, do things like invoke the, the scanner. Uh, now this is 
So Zest actually runs on its own, and then it doesn't have a scanner. But if the tool has the, those cap the tool it's running in has capabilities, you can start to invoke those, those capabilities. Um, and we've got more things to come. We want to keep it simple, but really effective. It's not going to do everything you want, ever want to do, but we want to aim the sort of 80% of things you want to do. You should be able to do very easily via Zest. Um, so we've come up with some use cases. One is reporting vulnerabilities to companies. Um, as you probably know, uh, Mozilla has a bug bounty program, both for Firefox and for our um, websites. But the standard, we're actually going to be, be recommending that people, you know, the ideal way will be to supply Zest scripts to us um, to actually um, to, to report vulnerabilities. And you know, reporting vulnerabilities to developers, I mentioned, and tool independent active and passive scanning rules and deep integration with security tools, which we're going to be using Zap. I have to go very quickly um, to time's out. Um, so we've got Zest runtime. I've, it's written, the, the um, reference implementation is in Java, but we're going to be, um, we already started ones in JavaScript and Python. And you want a different one, then please get in touch. We will help you. That is the end of my um, presentation. So in conclusion, I want to let you know Zap is rapidly changing. We're doing a lot of work on it. Um, we are introducing new features that are, we believe other tools just do not have, whether open source or commercial ones. Um, but we are implementing a lot of this functionality so that it can be reused for other tools, even competing ones. We're very happy for that. It is a community-based tool. If you want to get involved, please get in, get in touch. And also, we want your feedback. Please go to these questionnaires and give us feedback. And you can give me some feedback now um, if you've got any questions. Exactly. Yes, we've got a couple of minutes for questions left, and Simon said some feedback. Um, if you've got a question or comment, please raise your hand. I'll come to the mic, and then we get into it. Stunned silence. Yeah, we had that before. <laughs> oh, okay, sorry. So, yeah, so first of all, thank you very, very much. I, I love the whole tool. Uh, I, I thought it would be good, but I didn't think it was that good. It's excellent. I love the thank session you. handling and how you integrated that. Like, if you do pen testing and if you, if you have multiple users that you have to test, that is something I really, really am going to use, when, hopefully, in my next panel. So, thanks. Thank you. Hi. Uh, when you were showing how you can automatically sort of configure your browser to use Zap as a proxy, does Zap also then read the proxy settings for your browser and automatically configure it itself to forward onto your pre-configured proxy? Yes, it does. So you've got the corporate proxy. It's, you just press this button. It configures it all. And then you want to tear it down. You can just you go to the command line, that, that uh, graphical command line, and clear the configuration. And it will remove your, it'll reset the configuration to how it was before. And it will remove the Zap root CA as well, cert as well. in the corner. Simon, I've got a question on the classification of the um, uh, uh, scans themselves and scanning rules. Uh, this is something that quite a few commercial tools have and would be good to have in Zap. I'm just wondering if you're aware of this. Uh, because, for example, things like SQL injection testing or uh, persistent cross-site scripting uh, these are the things which can potentially break the site because if you are pen testing a production site, you always have a problem. Well, uh, it can break the site, so obviously companies are not very willing to basically um, get pen tested. The professional tools always have this mode which says uh, it's intrusive or non-intrusive. So, uh, do you have a feature? Uh, in if the you version? can see the top left-hand corner, there's something that says standard mode. Um, standard mode is you can do anything you like. If you've got a pull, there's a pull down there, there's safe mode. Safe mode will not allow you to do anything bad. Then there's protected mode. And again, you can't do anything bad until you set up some context and say that they are in scope. You can then do bad things to the stuff in, in scope, and you can't do bad things to stuff out of scope. Oh, fantastic. And I've got one more question on reporting, whether the mode is then reflected in the reports to say the site was scanned in protected mode, or what was actually, what was in scope? Right. Um, now, that's something we 
I mean, the, the reporting is still being worked on. Um, I would love to have that sort of information available. I don't think the mode is actually available now, but I would like to be able to report on all these things. I would love to be able to have a report that says this is actually what we did. So I, I mean, that will require more changes in Zap, but yeah, I'd love to have that in there, and that is planned. And if you've got any other requests and features, just email them to me or raise them as issues or whatever. Do you have a tutorial for people who are new to SAP? Yes, so we have video tutorials. Um, so if you go online, there are some, there's an introduction to ZAP, there's an introduction to ZAP 200. I will be doing an introduction, some videos for um, scripting for Zest and for Plug and Hack as well. The videos take a while to do, they take me ages. Um, <laughs> I record them a dozen times going, oh, no, I'll fluff that. Um, <laughs> uh, and then I just go, it's not how I want it, but I'm going to spend the next three weeks getting it right, so I'll just um, make it up. So, yes, we want to have more. We have videos. Um, please look at them. But if you've got requests for more videos, please let us know, because we know we want to document these things. And videos, people seem to like them and seem to be very effective. So, yeah, we'll be doing more. Simon, thank you very much. So whenever there are questions or comments left, as I can tell from my personal experience, Simon's more than willing to talk to you. Um, and so just grab him while he's around. Thank you very much. It was a wonderful talk. Thank you, guys.